Hey and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video we're going to look at the sheet composition tools and mostly some that we haven't really looked at before. And you can find that in the view tab and then sheet composition here. So before we get into it, if you happen to learn something, which I guess maybe that's why you're here, I hope, I hope, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Okay, I'm not going to waste any of your time getting into this. The sheet composition tools, I'm going to cover them all as in I'm going to talk about them all. Um, but I actually have a number of videos that cover the main subjects of the sheet composition tools. But So this video is going to be primarily the, the others that I haven't covered, one, but two, some of the more minor tools that maybe you haven't used, or let's say me, someone who's used Revit for a very long time, I don't find myself using. And now why would I, why would I bother making a video about something I don't use? Well... One, it can, uh, plenty of times, things have proven to be useful whether I've used them in the past or not. But two, it's just going to allow you to know what exists, know what's out there, and just understand the, you know, the full understand, have a full understanding of what Revit can do in this case, what sheet composition tools exist and what they can do. I, I will be honest, I found a couple of these tools yesterday not knowing that it was actually a tool and it turns out it was, and I'm not that excited about it. Nonetheless, I was more excited that I found something new, even though it happened to be something eh, not so exciting. But let's actually cover that first. The not so exciting yet, it happens to be a tool tool in the sheet composition is actually a uh, view. Of course, we have sheet, make a sheet. This is very simple. We've talked about this before. Sheet, you click create a sheet, use a template and you've got a sheet. That's easy. We've done that before. But the next thing here is actually that view, and it literally is place a view on a sheet. Now, when I first, literally this week, and somehow I've never known about this, and you'll know why, and I'll tell you why here in a second. But when I first saw this, I thought, okay, place a view on a sheet. You know, I thought there was only, well, one good way of placing views on a sheet. Uh, one normal way. You can place views on sheets with Dynamo and all this kind of stuff, but I thought there was like one normal way, and there is, but this is, I guess you could say, the most normal way. But if we click on this, we get <laughs> we get a list of views here, and it says we basically have two options, add a view to sheet or cancel. And so let's say I want to add this 3D back view. Well, I can click add to sheet, and just like that, I have it, and I can click it. There we go. I mean, I have added that perspective view to the sheet. I don't want it there, but you that's it. It's very simple. It does nothing else. And by nothing else, I thought, when I first discovered it this week, like somehow this week, I thought, oh, we can like hold down control and start clicking other view. Oh, no, no. I can hold down shift and select all these. No, no. It's one view at a time, which is, it's it's like, why, why does this tool even exist? Um, not to knock it, um, because it is nice. Now, the one thing I will say is, let's say we have our ceiling plans. I select them all. I still can't drag all four of them over. It's just the way it works. It's one at a time. That's Placing views on a sheet is one at a time. Fine. Uh, but the only reason I could see wanting to use this tool, like beyond the fact that I just learned about it, is that I can literally just see all my views in one place, which, uh, yeah, I can't tell you how many times I have just made a section. I made this or that, and... I, because I have so many views and so many sheets in my project, it's just kind of a mess and hard to find. And the last thing I want to do is search and then have it expand every every section uh, for only for me to have to, you know, take it back in. I, I don't want to do that. And so let's say I know the name of it. Well, if I happen to know the name of it, I can just click on view and I can clearly see, you know, it is essentially in alphabetical order um, by like view type which is nice. So if I know it's a section, well, I, I'm obviously it's, I don't have any sections in this project yet, but if it were an elevation, clearly I have a great starting point. It's somewhere in here. So that's the only reason I could see myself using it. Not that that's even that great because 99 probably well, actually no, I rounding up a hundred percent of the time up until this week, I would just drag the view onto the sheet because of course that makes perfect sense and it's easy enough. And the fact that I didn't know about this actual tool, like I didn't, I, if you asked, is placing views on a sheet and a tool in Revit, I would have said no. You just drag the view from, from the project browser, but apparently it exists. So just to know that. 
Title Block, we have covered that in another video. Just, it is everything Title Block. Uh, start with the Autodesk Basic one if you don't have one already. Um, and then build this out from there. Or if you feel gutsy, just start from scratch. Revisions, that's a big one. And of course we have the revision schedule. Everything that's going to show up on the Title Block. Uh, I have at least one, if not two or three videos on revisions. So check those out because that's, that's a, a very in-depth subject that... It only ends up falling within sheet composition because it ends up on a sheet and it is within the title block. So I, that's not where I would think to put it because sheet composition is kind of how your sheet is set up. And the rest of these start to make sense, but some of them don't. You could, you could even see here when I have, I'm not in a view or anything. I have match line, view reference, and viewports not usable as tools. Well, obviously for what they are, but then the question is, well, do they really belong within sheet composition? These are kind of like view composition, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, match line. Have, an, have other videos on match lines, but uh, the one thing I wanted to cover is obviously the rest of these here are viewable and you well, usable and viewable, I guess, within views. And so match line, it just tells you, it's used as a reference point. If I decide to cut my view right here, or I would have a match line on either side of the view as just a, a reference point, a reference line in this case, even though I, sh I shouldn't be using those terms. Reference, it it is for reference only. And generally you'd have view references on either side showing you which views or, or sheets to go to to see each one of those sides. Now, one thing I want to note about match lines is that it will show up throughout your model uh, by default. Um, that doesn't mean it's an actual 3D element because, and we know this because if I go to the visibility graphics and I search for match line, I don't see match lines. If I expand lines, I don't see match lines. Um, but when I go to annotations, i.e. 2D elements, and I go to match line, it is right there actually. So just be aware of that. It is a 2D element, but because match line is checked by default in basically every view type, view template, it's going to show up no matter what, unless you change that. So just be aware of that. And then finally, view reference plays in really well with match line. You click that and it, of course, it, you basically find whatever view you want based on the view type. We've, we're, we've kind of seen something like this whenever we wanted to place a view, except it's not all in one place. We have to filter by the view type and then the actual name of the view, which whatever. And so the result of that is we actually get a view reference in this case, because it's not on a sheet. I have no reference, but once it's placed on a sheet, it will actually populate that. So this is going to be a live kind of thing. So I, again, have another video on view reference. And then finally, this is another, <laughs> not to say I've discovered this because I, I have known about this tool forever, um, the viewports tool, but I've literally never used this and I'll show you why. So when I hover over this viewports tool, it says activates or deactivates a selected view within the sheet. Okay, it seems easy, so let's, I mean, right now, nothing is selected, and I don't have the option of clicking viewport. So let me click this view, and then all of a sudden, I get viewport show up here, and I can activate the view, but if I come back to view here, and I go to viewports, I, I can activate it or I can deactivate it. So we get the same tools that pop up, and it actually pops up within the modify tab, basically prompting us, because we've selected a view, hey, do you want to activate this? Yeah. So I go in here, great. That's it. I can use it. I can also come out to viewport up here again and then decide to deactivate it. Well, is that anything absolutely crazy, mind-blowing? No, it is not. So I can deactivate it that way. And why is that not mind-blowing? Because I can come over here, I can right-click, and I can actually choose to activate view there, which, whatever, that's, uh, that's no better. Um, but I can actually double-click the view and then double-click out of the view to... Act, either activate or deactivate. Now, the one reason I do enjoy this tool and have used it before. <laughs> have you ever dumped in a... It doesn't even have to be a view with a CAD file, it, but that's probably the biggest culprit of this. You dump a view in, and the extents of the view, which is not shown here, but the, this region here at the edge of the view, which we can see as I highlight over it, that is so large, so far out, and so far away from the edge of your <laughs> of your actual sheet that it's just so blown out that you can't, you can't, there's no way to see it at all. So you basically have to zoom out forever and 
hopefully find the end of your actual view because you have garbage flying out into outer space. If that's the case, then if I can't find the edge here, for example, then I can just simply go to the view tab and then viewports and deactivate. I don't even need to double click outside the view because I don't need to find it or, or any of that. I can just deactivate it. And then I can go about my merry way and deal with the view probably outside of the sheet or just simply remove it from the sheet at that point without having to deal with it. You know, there are other workarounds, but that's a great one. If you're literally lost within the view on the sheet and can't deal with getting out of it, <laughs> then that's how you deactivate it. Because I, again, 99% of the time, I'm going to deactivate the view by double clicking outside the view. Very simple stuff. Um, but I have this option of doing that up here in the, in the sheet composition tool. So, whew, these are some intense, intense tools. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that'll do it. Uh, didn't I can't say that I learned a ton, um, but again, this is more of bringing these tools to your awareness. There are niche times when they might be helpful, um, particularly uh, the guide grid. I just buzzed right through that, I guess. The guide grid itself um, is kind of interesting. I can just name this guide grid one. It's fine. I don't really care about the name, or I can pick another one. And the cool thing is that it will give me this guide grid over the, the actual sheet. And then I can click on here, and the only thing I can do is change the spacing. If I want that to be 5 inches, anything, you can see what happens here. Um, the thing I don't like about this is because is that I have no control over it other than these, these lines. There's no snapping. I, can't, I can move it just fine, but I can't snap to the edges. I, I, can, have, I can get it close. You can see, like, we're going to nudge, and I, I, I hate nudging. Really hate nudging. That just means you're doing something that isn't exact, which is okay sometimes, but not most of the time. But you can see with these guides. These guides, are they're not for anything amazing. They're literally just to guide you. <laughs> Where do I put this view? Do I want to keep it consistent? Do I angle? Do I put it here? I, wherever it is. So that's perfectly fine. If I come to this, I can see, well, maybe I want to use the same one or whatever. Well, I actually have this existing one that I just made, or I can make a new one. And then I can just place that there. Very easy stuff. Now, the, the real test is what happens when I change the spacing here of Guide Grid 1 to 2 inches. Well, if the other one is also named Guide Grid 1, therefore it's the same Guide Grid, it will look the same. And sure enough, it is. It's actually called Guide Grid 1 as well. It's actually the same element. That That's cool. Really easy. Now, when, can I select all in Project? Nope, can't do it. It is basically sheet-dependent. Or yeah, sheet dependent. Um, I can't. I can't say I've ever used this. Never needed to. <laughs> maybe there's. Maybe I should. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but there's not a whole lot to it. You know, the nice thing here again is if I move it, it's going. It, well, at least it should. It should respond. There we go. And so it's a great. It, it's great. It is what it is. It's nothing absolutely amazing, but very simple stuff. So that will do it for sheet composition tools. We. We looked at all of them. Again, I have a ton of videos made on really all of these, uh, but <laughs> if I didn't have a video of it, I do now in this one. So we the mainly in this video, we covered the view, uh, the guide grid, and we talked a little bit about match line, view reference, and then finally the infamous viewports tool. Whew. So if you did happen to learn something, which <laughs> maybe you did, maybe you didn't, maybe I informed you of something that you've never used before demolish that like button really really helps me out a lot even if you didn't let me know if you enjoy these tools or not I, I would be curious to know if you if you use them a lot if you let's say grew up using them or not because i never did so yeah that'll do it i will see you in the next revit video have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching